Nelson in gets it. Nice. There's a quick shot. Scores! Hands it off to number four. He cuts it down for ten. Long, long is good. afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is time that you're going to be watching this. My name is Kevin Cairo and I am the athletic director at Brockton High School and I am so excited to be doing uh, Coach's Corner with you and Brockton community and it's just going to give you an opportunity to get to know the coaches up here at Brockton High School that work with your sons and daughters throughout the school year and I am very excited to have our first, our very first inaugural guest, former Brockton High School graduate and wrestler and now in the elite 100 victory club coach Desan Petrus welcome sir hello thank you for having me I'm excited about this thank you yeah so just going back to last week a uh, milestone for you and and mark that you earned your 100th coaching win um, talk to us a little bit what does it feel like to come back to the gym you wrestled in and to earn 100 100 wins as a coach and sure. also you're an all-state wrestler and just uh, just the epitome of what Brockton High School is. Yeah, so um, I actually started my journey, I would say, sophomore year um, towards the end of the season, actually. And uh, Mark Mendez, uh, my best friend, who's the assistant coach right now of the program, he's one of the guys who basically started picking on me in biology and said, hey, maybe you should wrestle and then you'll be tough. Lo and behold, now I am running this program. But, you know, it was a good kind of testament to see, you know, me and Mark, you know, being inner city kids growing up in the city, um, not really knowing, you know, what to expect. We both went our separate ways in college. I went to WPI. He went to Springfield. Um, he's actually the first Brockton High All-State champ ever in Brockton High history. I actually lost my match, and I took second. Um, and I, I got to make sure I give him his praise for that. But I'll let you know this. When we went to college, I was Brockton High's first New England champion. He did not win New England okay. at college. Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, Mark was actually the first coach to actually come back and help out the system while I was still in college, and then I actually coached at Dedham for a little bit. And, you know, and then he reached out to me, and he was like, look, I'm an assistant coach here. Do you want to get your foot in the door and come home? I was like, come home. I was like, this is, a, this is, this is what I need in life, what I was looking for. So, you know, I came in here about nine years ago and jumped into the uh, freshman coach's spot. And then, you know, we just started really, it was like Tango and Cash, two best friends just going at it. And, you know, we really just started to grow and develop. When I say going at it in a personal, like personal positive type thing of like just really having conflicting ideas, but at the same time understanding the common goal. The common goal is very few principles that we live by. You know, teach these kids how to be disciplined, but also teach them how to set goals. And then setting them up with a network around there so they can do these two main major things and you know me and him both had the same upbringing you know the same family type structure you know we were still trying to figure it out as a youth and once we I started coaching here we we're like you know we got to put this on a bigger spectrum you know a bigger platform because there's too many kids out there that just have questions that maybe they're just afraid to ask their parents their teachers and realistically it takes a village and me and coach Mendez understand that so we just kind of develop our platform um, yes it's for the sport of wrestling but realistically we use this sport to make sure these kids are disciplined they can learn to set goals and they're a little bit more dynamic when they reach the real world but then I came home and now I'm coaching with my best friend I hit my 100th win it was just amazing. And the way the kids did it with a 47-0 shutout yep. versus a team in our conference is just amazing. I'm excited to see what these kids are doing, but I'm just glad to see what me and one of my best friends can really develop with the program right now. Yeah. Now, you said that this was your sophomore year that Mark kind of gave you the business in biology class. Yep. <laughs> what, sports did you, what sports did you play growing up? None. I was one None. of those kids where I was just super smart. You know, I went outside and played, which is a, a lost art for some of our children <laughs> nowadays. Um, but, like, honestly, I had no – I had no foot speed. I did not know hand-eye coordination. I, I just didn't have a niche. I was the smart guy going down this route. You know, I was a nerdy, geeky kid growing up. I probably weighed, you know, on a great day, 95 pounds when I was a sophomore, honestly. But, okay. yeah, no, no sports at all. This is my first baby. So when you get into the wrestling, and trust me, wrestling is probably the most demanding sport that we offer here. Uh, you go from not having any real competitive sports to next thing you know, you're getting thrown around on the mat. <laughs> yep, yep. It's just really surprising that you didn't quit. What kept you going? Because, I mean, it's tough to go in day in and day out knowing that you're going to get 
beaten up. Yeah. What I what I try to tell the team right now is I try to, you know, like, hey, use each other camaraderie to grow. You know, it's a different type of atmosphere. Um, with me and Mark, it was a very, very different situation back then, you know, when we were wrestling, you know, the late 90s. So we really just pushed each other. And it got to the point where, you know, you, if you're a sports person, you hate and love your drill partner. You hate and mm-hmm. love your quarterback and running back. But at the same time, you know, I wouldn't want him to sugarcoat if I'm slacking or if I'm not pulling my own weight. But at the same time, we just understood that a lot of the stuff we're dealing with was mental. And, you know, we just kept keeping our eye on the prize. You know, it's just a mental thing. And we were brocked and tough. We are not going to lose mentally. And that's what one of our coaches, Jim Mar, always tell us. At the end of the day, whether you mm-hmm. win or lose, you want your opponent walking off that match like, what happened? I just wrestled that Brockton kid. I don't even know what happened. So we just learned to mentally never break and literally just push each other, honestly. Okay. That just takes you perfect right into the next question. You talked about wrestling in the 90s. Has wrestling changed all that much? since when you were wrestling and what it is in 2022 or is it pretty much the same it's honestly it's completely changed i think similar to a lot of sports you're noticing that the youth are getting way more involved you know nowadays you know we're walking into events now and like you know you might be a freshman on paper but you have six seven years of experience wrestling at the youth level um when me and mark were around we didn't know anything about no youth teams or any of that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. we maybe had two three moves we just didn't want to lose um but again those are one of those things that we were in college and then we started coaching together and we're like look we're not going to survive and bring Cairo a state championship if we don't get a youth team <laughs> you know so boom three years ago uh Mark and Coach Wynn helped me develop this youth program that is just beautiful in all honesty Coach Wynn has just brand Coach Brandon Wynn is just taking it and running with it right now and honestly it's just a point where I just see a lot of just good people coming together for one common goal but you know Getting that youth program is just basically the big change that I'm knowing since right now. You know, we're a little bit behind the ball, but we're three years running. But these youth guys are very strong and they're very determined. All right. So talk to me a little bit more about that. I mean, you know, excited. What do you think this means to your future as the high school coach having this youth program? Because we struggle. I mean, we struggle with youth programs in the city. And I know it's just not here in Brockton, but a lot of urban places struggle with youth program. So you say that Brandon's got this up and running. What does this mean for you four or five years from now, do you think? I think now the city's starting to realize basically a lot of the character building and the other side of things that we do with our program, you know, and, 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 I, and I love saying, you know, it's wrestling, but it's a lot more to it. We've created a Brockton wrestling family, but we have a few things that we work on. The whole idea is to start the youth program, but not only use the youth program to develop the youth, but also to develop the current high school kids. So what we do is give these high schools actual job volunteer positions where they are managing kids. In my mind, mm-hmm. if you can manage a kid, you can manage an office. So yeah. they're learning about plans schedules and then the whole other aspect of dealing with parents i love you parents but you know (laughs) it's a it's it's a workout but you know i want these guys and the whole the whole thing is to make sure they don't walk into their career and not understand that you know even though i told you to be here at four i meant you to be here at 345 and if you're if you're on time you're late but we never learned that stuff in high school really i mean granted we had the bell system and stuff like that but like you know me and mark take it to a point where if you're late you're gonna feel it the team's gonna feel it Uh, the Mm -hmm. same thing when it comes to grades we check their progress reports every single friday it's not required but at the same time my our philosophy is school well family i should say then school and wrestling and then when you start to really start to get into our system you start seeing family and wrestling are the same thing working together to get to the school point so so the one part with the youth program is using it for our high school kids and our college alumni to develop these life skills, leadership skills and qualities and stuff like that. And it's all a rotating thing because at some point I'm hoping this little eighth graders or this little fifth grader, I should say, is going to be next in line to come yep. in and go through the same thing. Um, and then we take it even further with the high school group. Um, it's actually Mark who started what we did was called Careers and Cuts, where he basically yeah. went to his buddies who owned the barbershop. You know, we got some money together. We brought the kids in. We got the gym. We gave them free haircuts. But then Mark started to reach out to his network. And then we started having info sessions. So we had a credit team. We had the armed forces. So these kids are going to booth to booth, getting an experience about, you know, what to expect in the real world. Also getting a free haircut. And we just made it a fun thing. Um, we we're going to do round two, but unfortunately, COVID kind of put the kibosh yeah. in that button. Mm-hmm. We will we'll, we'll get back at it. The whole thing yep. is to make it a holistic approach to helping these kids. 
That's awesome. And it just goes back to my next, it leads up to my next question. I mean, you've got these younger kids, they have high school uh, wrestlers, they have you and Mark, who were your role models growing up and who were the people that you looked up to uh, when you were, when you were a young guy? Yeah. Um, I mean, so when I was growing up, you know, I was a little bit of different, you know, I had, you know, I would call two dads, you know, I had my real biological dad, Anthony, who's a great gentleman and really helped me as far as figure out, you know, the, the, the detailed side of the world. He's like the engineering background. And then I have my stepfather who I grew up with David Offit, who chose me the sales side of the thing. Um, my life is basically a book called rich dad, poor dad, just those okay. two different type of dads that kind of help you and develop you. So those two guys were like my rock solid, whatever I need, even to this day, they both call me you know is everything all said is everything good um but you know over the years i started to realize that you know for me to really grow i really need to be challenged i really need to understand constructive criticism so right now i'd say i probably have maybe six to seven mentors that i've met over my life whether they were my college coach um whether it's maybe um people that I've worked in like the workforce of what I work with my real job um, that I've learned over the years. Yeah. But, um, and I try to challenge people like that when I talk to them to make sure they figure out who their mentors are going to be and they be like, you know, okay with accepting constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the only way you grow. If you, you know, if you think that you have, you know, things you can improve upon and when you have those people that tell you that that's what makes everybody better. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Now you talked about Mark a couple of times. What's it like? What's it like going to work every day with your best friend? Uh, it's like a marriage, man. We love each other one day. We hate each other the next day. <laughs> but we know there's no way of quitting. I'm not leaving him. He's not leaving me. But it's one of those things where, you know, we do. I would say at the beginning we challenge each other. But now we talk the same. We walk the same. It, it's kind of nuts. You can hear us both shout the same thing at the exact same time. And, you yep. know, we both have the same thought process. Develop a place where kids, for the lack of better words, don't really need anybody, but still need somebody. You know, it's a lot easier for you to come back to your coach or someone who you blood with, you cried with, you won with, you lost with, to ask for help, as opposed to, you know, not really having an avenue. So, like, we really make it a point to make sure the kids know that we're best friends, but, like, it's funny. The parents call me the mom. They call him the dad. I'm the good <laughs> cop. He's the bad cop. But we're a great mix. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's a fun little marriage we have right now. Our wives I think it's hilarious, but yep. you know, it's a fun marriage we have. Yeah, it, it is. It's a lot of fun to see you work and, uh, you know, just how you are with kids and the relationships you, you have with your kids and all your former wrestlers that come back to see you and hang out. So that just speaks volumes right there to, to the impact that you've had. Um, now, as far as, it, you know, athletics goes, I think it's real important for everybody to get involved because it teaches you life lessons. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked about that a little bit. What does wrestling in particular, um, you know, I go, I see somebody like a Cole Wyman that goes off to the um, West Point. West Point. Full ride. I mean, <laughs> so it's the lessons that are taught on the mat and with you and that wrestling family. So what kind of things do you, do you hope that everybody takes from their experience at Brockton High Wrestling? So our program is very, very unique. It's, it's a little tough. We, we, we coaches go in there with the philosophy of breaking these kids mentally, physically, and then socially. And that's a lot. You know, I mean, like I'm on their social media telling them what they shouldn't be saying, what they should be saying, and things of that nature. So we really dig into this program a little bit more than what's kind of expected of us. Um, but for the like, the, it's just like us as far, as far as the planning, I would say, and just kind of the behind the scenes thing that, you know, it, it's it's really kind of like a constant conversation. I'm on, you know, two different text group with Mark, one with all the alumni, mm -hmm. one with all the high school kids, and then one with like sort of the parents. So I think it's the constant communication that really helps us thri thrive. But, you know, bring it back to your question. That communication is the key point, because, again, I tell you, it takes a village, right? Yeah. Um I see a lot of programs where, you know, the coaches and the parents don't get on the same page and it does not help the kids out. The coaches and the teachers don't get on the same page. It does not help the kids out. So I figure we try to develop a, a, a community where the kids realize, you know, 
you really need to tell your teacher you're struggling, but tell your teacher also your coach is involved. You know, we also want you to tell your parents that your coach said, yeah, I know you said you can wrestle with a C, but your coach said until he gets A's and B's, you don't exist to him. You know, those type of things, you know, making it a collaborative so the kids know that it's okay to admit fault, but at least be able to talk about with someone. I also mm -hmm. talked about, you know, they need to get the schools, the, the skills of trying to be disciplined and learn to set goals. So one thing that we've been doing for years, you know, these kids have to write down three goals and then they have to stick it on the outside their locker. The yeah, thought I idea behind that is, yeah. yeah, I don't, we don't play around, K-Row. The thought process is the alumni know and the coaches, when they come through, they have to do a sweep of the goals. So that way they can go and through and be like, oh, okay, Eddie, you want to be faster at being a running back. So this is what we're going to do. Today was a great testament. You know, we, we, um, we're past the part of training the team, and now we're training the individual. So we yeah. did a lot of open live stuff. We can focus on the kids. But, you know, back to your question, discipline, set goals. Those are huge things. A lot of character building has to happen because it's just a lot of questions. Me and Mark just really just kind of go back and forth every single year and be like, you know, I wish someone told me about my credit, you know, that wasn't my parent that kind of can go through it. I wish mm -hmm. someone told me that, you know, maybe I don't need the fancy sneakers right now. If I save my money, there's the car I want to have, you know. So we really try to challenge the kids to also have real life conversations. And I make it a point for my alumni to tell their path. Not only do I want them to learn these skills, I want them to learn that, hey, somebody probably already made the same mistake as you. So ask the question. Um, so those are kind of the key things I want them to know, like they're not alone, but at the same time, we have our own group of networking friends that we're developing that just spans from the youth to the parents. And, you know, they can accomplish anything in the world as long as they're disciplined, set goals, and they communicate well. All right. Couldn't have said it any better. And that, and I think that's just important for any sport uh, and just anybody. I mean, those are valuable lessons that, that you will take from high school to college yeah. or into the work world and you need to have those three things for sure. Yes. Yep. All right. Now it's fun time. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, this is going to be the top 10 list. I'm just going to give you a word oh, and boy. you're going to just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. There's no wrong answers here. We got this <laughs> is the top 10 hot list. All okay. right. Okay. New Bedford. We got to beat them. <laughs> got to beat them. <laughs> okay. Your best coaching win? Uh, my best coaching win. Um, I'd have to say it had to be Cole Wyman's third All-State championship. Just okay. sitting there with Coach Oldie, Coach Mark, and looking at each other like, can you believe this kid just did it again? And he was one of our youth kids. <laughs> like, yep. just, it was, that was just, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Something that's, that won't seem to go away. COVID. Ugh. Um, when I think of COVID, I honestly think of compassion is probably the first word that I think comes to my mind. Because, you know, I, I see it at the high school level. I see it at the college level. So at my other job, Northeast Electric, right now I'm interviewing the interns for our next internship program. And I'm sitting with kids who, like, really went through COVID through college or never even knew what college was because everything's remote. And then yeah. I have the 17 people that report to me um, at my job, and these are adults and watching them go through COVID. Like, it's it's a shock to the body. So when I think of COVID, I think of compassion and trying to make sure, you know, there. I always say there's more behind people's eyes when you start to mm -hmm. look in their soul and stuff. So you got to have compassion for that type of topic. Well, I didn't think that that could get so deep, but yeah, it is. <laughs> and it's true. And it's true. I mean, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head because I mean, it's, uh, it has turned our community, our world, our kids just upside down. Yep. And thank God we have wrestling to come back to. All right. Yes. Going to wrestling WWE. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, who, who, I you know, think I, you, you know, I have to ask that. <laughs> I know, I know, but honestly, when you say that, I immediately think Ultimate Warrior was my guy or Hulk Hogan was my guy. Nothing else All mattered right. beside those two dudes. <laughs> All right. Your favorite vacation spot? Ah, Aruba, by far. The, the weather, okay. I've never seen a mosquito in my life. My daughter Ava says it right now. She's going to move to Aruba when she gets older. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your favorite food? Ah, oh, 
man, I would say Thai or Asian I know you, I, I know you like to eat your food. Oh, Thai or Asian food. But I've honestly started to dibble and dabble, and I try to challenge myself <laughs> to eat a little bit more. But, I mean, if you ask me, like, oh, what do you think about where to go to dinner? I'm going to need a Thai spot or Asian spot right off the bat. <laughs> okay. What about your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. I'm honestly going to say Goodfellas, a casino. Like, those type of movies oh, I love. Love those Story, movies. right? <laughs> yeah, Love Story would be a good gangster movie. You know, that's me. Or, you know, a gangster movie like A Belly or stuff like that. Like, those are my kind of great movies back in the day. Okay. What about one bucket list thing that you want to do? Ugh. So... Honestly, I want to go to Africa and I want to bring the kids. That's kind of one thing I want them to experience. You know, um, I'm at a point right now in my life, you know, I'm lucky to be in a position where I am and the opportunities that I have and not for nothing, Carol. I don't want my kids to grow up to be in stuck up kids. So I want them to have these vacations and see how other countries live, so how other countries survive so we can start to click on them so, you know, they can grow up on their life and actually feel more proud of the stuff they have, but also understand that, you know, some of the visuals may not have what we have, but I also want them to really see where we came from collectively as a family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I want them to learn the cultures as much as possible. Like, you know, most of the time I we plan probably three trips for our kids a year and we try to make sure one of them's at a third world country where they realize and they see that, you know, we're different over here. America, we're a very rich, proud company, you know, from organization. Now, where in Africa are you thinking? Honestly, I, I don't know. I had one buddy who went, um, my buddy's sister went actually with his mom, and she's kind of the, the rock that's kind of pushing me through it. She's actually in the school system, Jenna, and, and I'm honestly probably going to lead back to her on that one. But it's also mm -hmm. something that my dad wants to do, so we kind of want to make it a big family thing. But, like, oh, nice. I also like safaris and stuff like that. Yeah, the problem I was going to say that would be awesome. I don't think the women are going to like to be on the safari. My ladies like to be pampered. <laughs> they like the, 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 <laughs> the spa. Yeah, yeah, these are it. my seven and eight year old daughter. <laughs> All right. The one thing that sets you off. Um I don't know, man. I I it's it's really hard for me, I would say, at my point in my career in life to write really lose it, only because I just I always think that there's someone that is counting on me. And if I break I ruined everything, and I, and I try to always think about those sort of things. So what I do is I'll set up little stress reliever things to get myself together, get my mind right. I'm very big on morning daily affirmations. I'm not picking okay. up my phone first. I am waking up. I'm telling myself how I'm going to have an amazing day, how I'm great, how I'm the man. I do that every single morning. Um, mm -hmm. And I really try to avoid stress. My family was very big on stress was the number one killer when I was growing up. So I kind of learned these little avenues. So I, I really don't try to let things kind of twist me. But let's be serious. I have two daughters who are elementary right now. So let's be serious. <laughs> Anything <laughs> involved in my babies will probably make me tweak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your last one, the athletic director at Brockton High School. Great change, my <laughs> guy. He's going to get me, we're going to get him that state championship, and we're going to flood the city with nothing but powerful, positive kids in the world. No, oh, oh, I, I, I'm i telling you, this has been an absolute pleasure, and uh, I think we're, I mean, we ate up about uh, 30 minutes of time there, bud. <laughs> it was fun, man. It's fun when you're talking about love and kids in the city, man. I love this yeah. sort of stuff. And, I mean, this is one of the things that I'm glad that we were able to get you on first, especially after you had your 100th win. And I yes. know that you you, pour, you and Mark pour, pour your heart and soul into the program, and it shows. 100%. And it's just great to go down there with the youth program and the parents that you have there, and everybody's yes. vested. And, I mean, it's really – uh, yeah. I'm excited to see where this is going to go. And, I mean, we still have a long ways to go in the in the wrestling season. Yep. And I wish you and your team the best of luck. And, um, Thank you. Thanks again for coming out, Deshaun. I really do. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. Thank you guys for the time. Parents, all hands on deck. Give me your kids. I'll make them champions. Give me your kids. <laughs>